there everyone so welcome to something saturday i thought today i would do a bit of a glues expose um so you will see in the catalogue that just after all the um the dyes there is a page that says adhesives or you know in my simple terms glues um and we actually have quite a number of glues which um, can be a bit confusing when you look at them all and go, oh my goodness, what the heck do I choose? So I thought maybe I would just explain what you could choose for what reason and, um, and what my favourites are. So let us start off, let's move that away. And if I put it to one side, then potentially I might be able to tell you the prices of it as well as we go along. Woohoo. Okay. So I think what I'll do is I'll actually start at the top of the page and work myself down all the way through the numbers. So we will end up with my favourite glue at the end. Aww. Ooh, it's very dirty looking glue actually, but there you go. So stamping dimensionals. We have big ones. So in case you can't see the size of it, that's the size of it. And we have small ones, which I'm now looking for my pokey tool, which I took into the other. Oh, no, I didn't. There it is. Here it is. Found it. So that's the size of the small ones. So you've got big daddy ones and little tiny baby ones. How cute are they? So they've both got their uses. So potentially you might be putting something on that, uh, like an embellishment or a... Um, so if you were taking... Ooh, I don't know, just got a few bits here. So if you were taking something like this, I would probably use the large ones and I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'd have that so it sticks down. But then if I was, if I had something that was a lot smaller, um, hmm, kind of picking at straws here, didn't really think to um, organize lots of little things. So potentially if this was like half the size of this, but I wanted this up, I could use the small ones and just go along and put, so like one, two, three, four, maybe of the small ones along there. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's just chuck those back onto the sheet there. And it's really nice to have a dimensional because it just gives you a little bit of <laughs> dimension to your work. <laughs> just in, in case you're wondering why dimensionals are called dimensionals, that'll be why. Okay, so the other one that is in the catalogue is actually black dimensionals. And I had some black dimensionals once upon a time, and um, I'm not too sure where I've put them now. So there you go. They are black, obviously, to go under stuff that is dark coloured. Um, so if you had like a, a black card and you were putting something blackish on top of it, you wouldn't really want something white showing between the two. So that's where the black dimensionals come in and they look really cool for that. So that when you buy the black dimensionals, they come as a pack of mini and standard. So you get um, 200 standard ones. So you get two sheets of that, which the sheet is that size so you get two sheets of that and you get i believe it's two sheets of that and obviously they're black is that right mini dimensionals 480 i think that's right okay the other thing i should say is stamping dimensionals usually you get three sheets of that in one pack it's six dollars and it gives you 300 little um hexagons However, you also have all the way around the outside to use as well. So in fact, there's masses more than 300 that you get out of a pack. And the mini dimensionals is the same. You get 720 pieces and they have quite a thick border around them. You can see I've actually chopped off some of this just to use um, as a straight line underneath something anyway. Um, and then, yeah, so you get mini stamping dimensionals you get 720 pieces plus the borders and they're also six dollars so they're a bit of a bargain these things so that is that so that is to lift anything up on your cardstock the next thing on the list is tear and tape adhesive 
which is this stuff here. Now, I love this for ribbons in particular, and it's you can obviously use it for paper. So all it is is you can tear it like that, and you can then attach it onto something like that. I recommend, you know, buffing it down a little bit first, and then you'll find that the edge comes off nicely and it gives you a straight line of tape which is why it's really good for ribbons so if you're taking if you're putting a card together and you know that you want a straight ribbon on there you can just take your tear and tape and go okay i want my ribbon like that you put it down and then you've got a nice straight line for your ribbon to go on to so i do find that the tear and tape is really strong the um the the stickiness of it is really strong so good stuff Next one, let's move the tear and tape out of the way. Stamping seal. Arr, arr. <laughs> Sorry, my my automatic thought thought is when I when I hear stamping seal, I just automatically think arr, arr, of seal. <laughs> okay, so I meant to actually replace this one because this one's been playing up a little bit, but stamping seal. So when you use your stamping seal, I'm just going to grab a scrap bit of paper use this in fact you know what i will just stick something to this card why not in fact why don't i just stick this to it <laughs> uh wonder if i've got any ribbon that would work hang on one second um, 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 um. let's see whether that would look nice with it i reckon that one that would go all right all right so in that case might as well use some of these glues for this all right so i want to have a nice straight line potentially if you had grid paper underneath you you could just go okay i want it to be a nice straight line like that hopefully that's straightish and pull the end off like that now i'm looking at it, it doesn't look straight at all so fabulous okay so we're just going to tuck the ends over like that and then, as I say, buff it down, pull that piece out, and we will stick that one down there. Then pull that down like that, because I don't really want it to, I don't want to take the whole thing off, because otherwise it's going to stick to my stuff underneath. And that probably won't impress me if I do that. Oh, good oh it's a little bit longer the other thing with the um the tear and tape is if you're sticking a ribbon to it and you go oh my goodness that's not quite right you can actually easily take your ribbon back up again so it's very handy tape to have this and let's just take that piece off there and find my dustbin and then there it is so we now have that piece onto there and we've used our um, tear and tape adhesive so this one's the next bit i had put a little bit of tear and tape onto there just to show it to you earlier i'll take it off there um, but potentially you could just use tear and tape to just attach this down as well what else am i going to do with this well we'll find out in a minute this is going to be one of those as we go along cards so to use this you want to have it so that it's let me just show you so that it's close to the surface to begin with you tilt it down you pull it along like this and you get to the end you tip it up and you pull it off that way it actually breaks off and then it's right at the tip so you'll actually be able to feel that it's just sticky just there so when you put the next one down the stickiness should be there and it should pull along so that's how you use the stamping seal and let's pop that there and that's all good all right so the next thing on my list is the stamping seal refill so this has a refill and literally all you do is chuck that in the bin and you get your next one out and you put it into there and you close it up and 
Bob's your uncle. So, stamping seal refill. That was easy, wasn't it? Next one. Ding! Stamping seal plus. Now, again, I had a stamping seal plus and I have no idea where it's gone to. It's probably gone to the same place as my, um, uh, my other pairs of scissors have disappeared to. <laughs> Who knows? Somewhere. I am gradually clearing up my craft room so they may turn up. Who knows? Anyway, so Stamping Seal Plus, this is pretty strong stuff. Stamping Seal Plus is stronger and it actually has these sort of like little, little cutoff points in it. So, so it's got like little, little lines. Um, it's actually quite an easy one to use as well when you use it. It just automatically breaks at the line. So um, it's, but otherwise it's identical, same usage same sort of thing and surprisingly enough there is a refill for it exactly the same thing so take it apart chuck the refill out the, the empty one out new one in put it back together again bob's your uncle so that is that one we can put that to one side so we have done those guys and those guys let's put those in the corner we're not going with nobody puts baby in the corner. We're just going with the refill, the um, adhesives in the corner. All right. So next one is mini glue dots. Bum -ba -da -bum. Mini glue dots. What are we going to put on with mini glue dot? Oh, I know. Where's my ribbon gone to? All right. So mini glue dots. This is how they come. Now you want to take the whole thing out of its packet rather than finding the end and pulling it because these are the glue dots. So potentially if you were to do that, you would end up with a whole heap of glue dots nicely positioned down the edge of your inside of the packet. So take it out, hold it like this and literally just pull it back until you find your first glue dot and then potentially your second and your third and your fourth and so on. But literally just do it like that. Okay, so I am gonna go with trimming that to something nice looking. And we are gonna use a glue dot to put on a ribbon. So glue dots are really handy for putting ribbon onto, uh, not necessarily ribbon, but small embellishments that don't have their own um, glue. So potentially, I'm going to see if I can ooh, persuade this to become a little teeny tiny bow because I think that would look really pretty and it doesn't wanna, does not wanna play. Okay, hang on, we can do this. Okay, we can do it like this. There it is. Oh, pretty, pretty little bow. All right, and let us give it a bit like that and a bit like that. So it's, I was gonna say it so that it's even, but <laughs> obviously that wasn't even at all. And my goodness, this does not want to cut. I wouldn't usually use these scissors either for this. These, these scissors are amazing for paper, not so quite so amazing for ribbon. So do I want to put it on sideways? I could do it sideways, yeah. Maybe at the end there. All right, so potentially you could either put your glue dot straight on like that. Oh, in fact, I could put it down there. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to put it down here because I don't really like it on there. So awkward. Um, so let's just go. So I would actually just with a small embellishment like this, I would just press it into the glue dot, pull it off. The glue dots there on the back and just pop it down onto your card. And there it is. So potentially you could use your tear and tape adhesive and just put a little strip of that down on the back there and that would also keep it in place as well. Glue dot's a little more unobtrusive. So that's how I would do that. Um, another thing, so for example, you know when I said that some of you could use, oh my goodness me, I'm so sorry. Let me just check and make sure I didn't, I did. 
They bumped everyone out of the way. Sorry, folks. Right, you know when I said that you could use little smaller um, 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 doodars? <laughs> embellishments. So I've got a few small embellishments here. So for example, these really cute little from my heart faceted gems don't have glue on the back of them, but the glue dot would work. However, then there's these little teeny tiny faceted gems and you could no, I wouldn't recommend it. Personally, I would use a different glue for that. But you can actually roll these to make a smaller thing. So if your ribbon is quite fine, you can actually just take it and roll it like that so that you end up with quite a small... Let's just pop it onto there so you can see what I'm talking about. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to attach itself to me. Anyway, yes. So you could have a little tiny small piece like that as a glue dot bit. And I'm just going to chuck that bit in the bin because um, obviously I'm having issues with that. <laughs> okay, the other thing I did wonder about was whether these gold things would go with this. They might not because they might not be the right colour. They're not quite the right colour. Okay. But I would use glue dots for those, so that you know. Excellent. All right, glue dots out of the way. What's next on our list? Silicone craft sheet. Oh, funny that, I've been using that, and I'm pretty sure that you would recognise this from my previous videos. I use this all the time when I'm doing any kind of gluing. I just love the fact that, you know, once it's... Once you've done your gluing, it just all sort of just brushes off like this. And then you end up with a, well, doesn't look particularly clean, but it is clean. <laughs> Trust me. Um, so, yes, silicone craft sheet, $10. Oh, I forgot to tell you, mini glue dots, $8. And you get 300 of them in that pack. Pretty good going. Silicone craft sheet, $10. It has a lifetime. Look at this. It just stretches and... Wow! If you're into hot gluing, fantastic. If you're into cold gluing, fantastic. <laughs> cling adhesive is next on my list. Ah, oh, now I don't have any cling adhesive, but when you buy a stamp set, now if it's a rubber stamp set, it comes with all the backing that goes onto the stamp set on one of these sheets. So potentially that one came off there. And this is sticky, which is why it clings to your block. See, cannot shake it off. And it's amazing, this stuff. So if it gets like, if it gets to the point where it's not sticky anymore, you literally just wash it with water and it gets re-sticky really again. So if you have any um, wooden stamp sets that you're taking off their blocks and you're wanting to have something sticky on the back of them you can either keep hold of the pieces that these come off and chop these up and put them onto the back or you can purchase in the catalog um, the cling adhesive so it costs $14 and you get 168 strips that are three quarters of an inch wide by one and three quarters of an inch long or in centimeters that's 1.9 centimeters by 4.4 centimeters um so yeah you get quite a few in there and if you don't have any old you know pieces from your stamp sets then um then yeah you could use that or if you've got any sort of like old um cling mount stamps that aren't clinging properly because they're the old ones that didn't have that special cling stuff to them then you could potentially put some of that onto it right moving on to the next thing foam adhesive strips i'm so sorry that these are looking a little bit manky but um but it's because they get used you see <laughs> now cool thing with the foam adhesive strips 
is that there is a difference in height between the normal, um, um, what are these called, dimensionals and the foam adhesive strips. So if you wanted a card and you wanted to layer up things, you could have this on a lower layer and this on a higher layer, if that makes sense. But these are absolutely fabulous if you want to make a shaker card and you want it to be in your own special shape. You can actually bend these round the corners and and create sort of whatever you want to do with them. So let's see if I can sort of show you. Let's grab this and you'll see that you literally just move it round like this and potentially you would do it like that and then you'd peel off the top and there it is so you could have you know your um, piece of window sheeting on the top and your um, piece of um, cardstock underneath it and then you put your sequins into there and obviously you've got your cardstock underneath you put your sequins in then you put your um, your window sheeting on top and you yeah and there you go so then that would form your circular bit that I'm just going to leave that on there now because I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back on to here in the course of this video so there we go look a smiley face <laughs> okay feel happy if you're happy and you know it get a smiley face um silicone craft sheet <laughs> all right moving on again we shall move on to the heat and stick powder and i've just realized that my heat gun is um in my classroom because I've been using it in there. So um, I can't actually show you it with my normal heat gun, but I can show you it with another heat gun. So give me one sec. So long as I can find the heat gun. This is not looking helpful. I had it here not long ago. Okay. And on the other hand, I can't. Okay, so I will explain how it works. All right, so heat and stick powder. You would need this stuff with this, okay? So what you would do is you would ink up your stamp with Versamark, stamp it, and then dust over with this stuff. So you just basically dump a whole heap of it on there, tilt tip off the excess and tap it off and then you heat it until it turns tacky so what happens is you'll feel you'll be able to put your finger on it and go oh yes it's it's tacky there now then you can either use glitter or the gold uh flaky stuff which I've forgotten the name of. This is really good. So uh, the gilded leafing is the word, word I'm after. Gilded leafing, see, voila. I won't open it because it'll just go ping and go everywhere. Um, so anything loose that you want to set into it, you add that on. So if it's the gilded leafing, you can just leave it so once you've got this on you put your gilded leafing on and that's it you brush off the excess that's done if it's glitter so you put this on you've got it to the tacky stage you've glittered it you actually then want to reheat it to set that glitter into the um, heat and stick powder so I, I will have to show you that at some point I'm really sorry I um, Probably should have been slightly better prepared for this one, but um, we're getting on in the day and um, and I wasn't, so I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll just move this to one side and carry on. Uh, so the next one is the foam adhesive sheets. So this stuff is the same height as the normal um, dimensionals thank you very much whoever said that in the background I'm sure somebody did um, 
and this you can because it's a sheet like this you can actually cut different things with it so potentially you know how I was saying using this you could create the circle well you could take a die cut and you could create a circle in the middle of this and have it as your shaker card or you could um, you could just cut it up and use it like dimensionals so potentially whatever size dimensionally bit that you want you could also use it um, with any die cut to create a padded die cut basically so if you've got something that's relatively um, thin and you wanted it padded you're going to have difficulty um, sticking these little pieces onto it then you could die cut it and then take the the edge edging off as it were so you'd obviously stick your paper to it on one side die cut the whole thing tear off the um, the other side and then you can stick it down hopefully that explains that really handy stuff I really like it um, so that's that one adhesive sheets obviously all of these things can be used with paper um, so adhesive sheets Adhesive sheets, if you've ever heard of, of something called jack paper, I'm pretty sure jack paper is still around, but that's what this is pretty much. So it's double-sided adhesive sheety stuff. So again, you could use it with your dies. It's got, you'll kind of see this um, hopefully. Um, it's, it's actually got like a part there that you tear off and there's one there as well so it's got it comes in like three parts so you can see that that's the whole size of it um, it's got three pieces down there the sticky does stick to that side not this side just so you know because that threw me a lot to begin with um, so you could use this with your die cuts you could potentially use it on the back of one of these if you've not got other glue. It's probably not what I would want to use it for. Um, it costs $17.50 and you get 12 sheets of this size. So probably quite economical anyway. Um, and what else was I going to do with it? So I was going to show you that we could do something with it here what could we use we want something that's loose you know what you can also use um glitter with this glitter works really nicely with it so we might um rustle up some of my old glitter hang on one minute let's see no So sadly, stamping up doesn't actually offer glitter anymore. Um, not not in the same way. Uh, okay, let's just move that completely out of the way because I really want my sheet here. And let's see whether I put my glasses back on. Ha <laughs> ha! And we go down here. So because this particular piece doesn't have the lines going through it, you actually need to do a bit of persuasion and then work out which side is the sticky side. That side is the sticky side. So good. I can take that off there. Let's go with sticky side down. Now what you will find is that um, it sort of rubs off. It's not, it's not like the tear and tape adhesive that sort of stays there. So you do need to sort of rub this one down quite well for it to actually stay in place. Whoops. So either use your bone scorer or the back of your nail or something that's sort of smoothish. And then when you take this off, I don't know whether you can see this, there's actually a line of that stick there. Let's 
go. Oh, you know what would be even cooler? <laughs> I'm going to also bring in my gold. So, let's see. Oh, isn't it pretty? I used to love this stuff. Dazzling diamonds. It was around for years and years and then... And then they got rid of it, which was so sad. So I've also got a bit of gold glitter here. I used to love these Stampin' Up! glitters. They're such beautiful, fine glitters. And you know what? I'm also going to just, just do that. And should have thought of that slightly sooner, shouldn't I? Mm. Yes, really should have thought of that slightly sooner. Oh, well. So, yeah, now I'm going to get covered in glitter and everything's going to sparkle for the next few days. But it's really good for that sort of thing. And as I say, on the back of your dies, superb. Let me chuck those back over there. And... <laughs> <laughs> I now have glitter everywhere, oh my gosh. Which is probably why Stamping Up got rid of their glitters. Oh look, I'm getting awfully gluey here. I'll just rub that off there. Excellent. All right, so adhesive sheets, the last one. Woohoo, we're down to the last one. Oh no, where was this one? How come I've missed this? Because I know this will be in here somewhere. And yet, maybe we got rid of it. <laughs> Gee, I'm with the times, aren't I? Uh, okay, well, we will move on to my favourite. So this one here is my favourite because I find that it does most things. So if I could, if I only had to choose two glue types, then these would be it. My dimensionals and my Tombow. So I tend to find that if you keep the Tombow this way up, I usually use, so, um, yeah, hang on, rewind a bit. Um, it's got two ends, okay? So you unscrew it and you've got one end, which is a thick spreading end in case you ever need to spread heaps and heaps of Tombow onto something. And the other end is a thin pointy end, which is the end that I use the most. And to be honest, I think most people will probably say the same thing. So the good thing with this side is that you can control the amount of glue that's coming out. So let me give an example with a bit of cardstock. Let's find a bit of card. And so I can feel this one's a little bit, um, yeah, there we go. So hence the fact I use my, um, my mat all the time so it'll so I can use the corner of my mat just to make sure that my glue is coming out. I will also use this with a sponge so if I have an intricate die um, I will put glue into the corner of here I'll pick it up with a sponge so that I can sponge it all over my intricate die and that'll work as well so but I'm going to do this I'm going why the heck is she doing that because I can. Okay. So, cool thing with this is that, that you can leave it like this. And if you leave it to dry completely, it then becomes repositional. Or you can use it and stick something directly onto it. So, potentially, if I was sticking on something like this, I would put the glue onto the back of this, then put it onto my card rather than um, putting it onto my card and then putting it on that because now I've got heaps of glue everywhere that I don't really need. However, there was a purpose behind this, so I'm just going to blot off some of this glue. Probably should have done that with a, um, um, a clean piece of paper but hopefully it will still work to what I want it to do. So I'm actually going to use it with some of the um, um, the gilded leafing now. So because I wanted it so that it was 
getting towards that being slightly drier stage. So when I use my gilded leafing, I showed you that pot earlier and said I'm, there's no way I'm opening that. And the reason is because as soon as you open it, it goes whoo and you see all of this stuff. So you see how cool is that? And that's why I, um, I deliberately did that on my card so that I could create a scribble background and make it gold, which I thought was going to be quite cool. And I'm quite happy with that, actually. Um, so what else can I tell you about the Tombow? Um, so it's, it's actually stamping up, call it multi-purpose liquid glue. And if you're searching for it on the website, you will not find Tombow usually, unless you've had it as Tombow before, and then it somehow manages to remember that. Um, but otherwise it calls it multi-purpose liquid glue. It's $7 and gee, it lasts forever. <laughs> I mean, not, not literally forever, but it really feels like it lasts a long, long time. Um, you definitely want a silicone mat when you're using it because it can go everywhere. If you have it like this, as I say, just open it up and check how it's going to come out before you start using it on your card because it, a little goes a really long way with this. So if you start off with um, like a couple of little dots, you'll find that they'll go and spread out for you but if you start off with a massive dot you're going to have glue everywhere and it's all going to ooze out of the side of everything so yay <laughs> um so that i think is my oh no one more thing i was going to show you so although it's not on the glue page um there is something called shimmery crystal effects now this is not as i say it's not on the glue page but it is in the um embellishment no no that's not it it's in the extras page not storage paper basics maybe no that's not it either uh, i'm not too sure what it's called accessories and more accessories and more there it is okay so this stuff is really pretty so what happens is Seeing as I've got this one here, I might as well use it. So let's see whether I can get it going. Hopefully it's not too old. Usually it has a, um, oh, there it is. So, so usually I put a pin into the top of it, so I'm not too sure where my pin's gone to. But it will give you this really cool effect so potentially if you're wanting to have something so that it um, it looks slightly wet and slightly shimmery you would use this so it gives you uh, looks a little lumpy the way I'm doing it it sort of evens out I don't know whether you can see that and it's definitely not showing up as particularly sparkly but it does have sparkles in it trust me Let's just persuade that down. Hang on one minute. Let me... ah, there we go. Good shake down to the bottom. Oh yeah, I can actually see the sparkles coming out um, on there now. And let's just take that one as well. So crystal effects used to be around um, and people used to love it just to sort of give a little bit of dimensional dimension on top of something like this. Um, and this one is just, it's beautiful. It's just got a slight sparkle in it. So shimmery crystal effects. Um, and I kind of, I know it's not a glue, but I kind of class it as a glue. So um, that's why it's there and i reckon that we are through our glues so well done for staying with me with this um what else can i tell you 
Um, not too sure. If you have any questions about it, please do ask about it. Um, and certainly say hi in the comments below because, you know, I love hearing that people are actually watching me as opposed to me just waffling away to myself, which I do that quite well, but it's nice to know that someone else is there too to hear me waffle. Okay, have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.